Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for tuning back in. Today is Saturday. Um, got a couple cards to show you here, and then I'm going to get into a really fun story about a crazy rare attic find of a Babe Ruth card from 1933. First of all, thanks to <laughs> Papa Rossi from uh, Talking Ball Cards for this amazing 1963 Fleer Carl Yastrzemski new addition to my PC of Yaz. Uh, I'm closing in on his Playing Days Tops run, and I have a lot of oddball cards from his uh, his Playing Days as well. I'll do a video, it's gonna be in the next few months probably, when I, I'll show all my Yaz stuff. And then I'm also a big track nut, and uh, a thing Mo is currently the best 800 meter runner in the world. She won the gold at the Olympics last year. Uh, she's amazing. She's an American. And so I'm hoping, I got this for like $2 on eBay, hoping to figure out how to get her to sign it. She doesn't do TTM, at least not as far as I can tell. So I'm not sure. It'd be interesting. Um, and I'm also, Sydney McLaughlin is the greatest 400 meter hurdle runner in the world ever. And I, uh, I have her 2017, I think, Sports Illustrated, the first thing she ever appeared on publicly. I gotta figure out how to get her to sign that too. She does do TTM, maybe. Track stars aren't big into TTM, so it's really tough. If they returned one last year, does that mean that they will again this year? As you can imagine, track stars uh, are only stars in the track world and aren't big elsewhere. So also, uh, before I get into the story, I'm thinking about opening up memberships for my channel. And I'm wondering what you would be interested in if you are interested in memberships. You don't need to tell me if you're not, that's fine. I don't care. Uh, but if you are interested in memberships, what kind of perks would you be interested in? Would it be a, like a bonus video? every month would it uh, i think the standard thing that people are offering are like custom emojis for chat cool i can do that but i'm really interested in what things you'd be interested in from me i think that the the best thing i produce are stories like the one i'm about to do here and if i were to make one per month um, unique to my members or only accessible to members what do you think let me know in the comments so uh this one any sort of article that starts with attic find is going to grab my attention. This one comes from uh, Sports Collectors Daily. It's, uh, it's a vintage book dealer was in an attic in Vermont. And they uh, made a purchase of a collection because it had vintage books and ephemera. There's that word again. So this, uh, this book dealer is called DeWolf and Wood Rare Books. They are out of Alfred, Maine. Now, I've lived in Maine my whole life. I didn't know where Alfred was. It's actually in Western Maine, fairly close to the New Hampshire border, down kind of close to Portsmouth. Um, so they're in, in Vermont, in the attic, and they uh, in this collection is a Keds shoebox with non-sports cards like Indian gum from the 1930s. Cool. Indian gum cards are kind of popular still now. They're pretty, they're semi-rare. Um, and so in this box, after buying it, they found a 1933 Uncle Jack's Candy Babe Ruth. There was also a Wes Farrell card in there too, but that's unimportant to the story. The uh, Uncle Jack's Candy Babe Ruth card is what is getting all the attention. It's a very, very rare card. I'll get into how rare that is. Um, it was, the, they were the only two sports cards in the entire box of all the, the cards. Uh, there is small paper loss on the back. So DeWolf and Wood listed the card on eBay, the starting price of $9.99. They didn't know what they had, no idea. There were no details. All it said was uh, sports card with Babe Ruth. Salt, uh, King of Swat, I think it said, because that's I think that's what it says on the card. Um, they very quickly realized that they had under, underestimated the value of this card. They got 25 bidders. 
total of 139 bids. It sold for just under $49,000. Pretty crazy. Uh, so I was really interested in what this set was because I'd never heard of Uncle Jack's Candy. And uh, I, I really enjoyed the history of these cards. Uh, in 1933, Uncle Jack's Candy produced these cards in New England, so it makes sense that this was found in, in an attic in Vermont. Uh, they were headquartered in Springfield, Mass., in Newport, Rhode Island, and each pack was a transparent wax paper with one card, and you could see who was on the card through the wax, along with a piece of gum. Surprise, surprise, that was the thing for many decades, and a coupon. And the coupon... Uh, said that they offered, and it was offered to New England boys. Apparently girls were ineligible. This was 90 years ago. Um, so for collecting the most wrappers, and if you collected 100 wrappers, they would send you a league baseball. And the top, there, there was also a prize of a trip to the World Series. And what ended up happening was they just sent the ten, the people, the ten people who sent the most wrappers into them to the World Series. Now that was the 1933 World Series. It was the New York Giants against the Washington Senators. Uh, the Giants won in five. It was the last time Washington went to the playoffs. Washington D.C. had a playoff team until 2012. Uh, of course, this the Washington Senators of 90 years ago turned into the Minnesota Twins, I think 30 years later, early 1960s. Uh, so Washington didn't even have a team for decades. Had their first playoff team in 2012, first World Series they hosted in 2019. Um, so a little, little baseball history there. So in this set, the 1933 Uncle Jack's Candy, there are only just over 200 total cards from the entire set that have been graded by PSA, SGC, and BGS. That's how rare these cards are. Um, only 10 have been graded of Babe Ruth by PSA and 6 by SGC. So only 16 there of this Babe Ruth card. Um, PSA hasn't graded anything above a 3.5. SGC has a 6.5 and a 6. Um, the checklist of this set has 30 players, two-thirds of which are Hall of Famers, but uh, each card has the potential, it has four different variations, four color variations, early variations, just like today. So collect the rainbow, there are actually 120, if you consider four each for 30 cards, but it's impossible. Nobody will ever collect all 30, probably, let alone 120. The set includes Jimmy Fox, did not have Lou Gehrig, who was wildly popular at that time and was featured in Gaudi and, and some other sets in that era. In May of 2022, the PSA 2 Ruth, this was just a few months ago, sold for $59,000. So this one, having sold raw for $49,000, people must be assuming that it's real. First of all, I'm going to talk about that in a second. And um, that it's higher than a two, even with the slight paper loss on the back. Or maybe, since that one sold for 59, maybe not higher than, but semi equal to. Uh, last year, 2021, a PSA 3.5 Ruth sold for $68,000. In 2019, remember this is pre market boom, a PSA 7 pack sold for $66,000 graded a PSA 7. Imagine what they would sell for now. It would clear six figures, I have to think. So, speaking of the authenticity of this card, because of eBay's authenticity guarantee program, the sellers, this bookstore, have to mail the card to CSG, CSG authenticates it, and then they mail it to the buyer. So, really nothing on the, no risk for the buyer here. You pay $49,000 and you either get your money returned if CSG finds that it's not authentic, or you get a card that's worth at least $49,000 in all likelihood. So pretty fun stuff. I love these stories. I've got more of them coming. Uh, I have like a dozen Chrome tabs open 
in my browser with stories like this that I want to put out on my channel that I find really fun and interesting and I think you guys do too. If you're new here, click that subscribe button, click the like button. I really appreciate that and thank you very much for watching.